Okay, we are live streaming right now. We will wait about one more minute really quick. We're waiting for Mrs. Lee really quick. <laughs> Calvin, can you give me a thumbs up if you're able to talk to her? Okay. Yeah. She's asking for passwords. I'll just pop on with them. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good morning, Bobcats, and welcome to our flagpole assembly. We are very excited to um, introduce some new people that are joining us today and some familiar faces as well. Uh, we are excited that we're able to recognize students for the characteristic of caring, and I'm extra excited to be able to introduce you to our student body leadership um, cabinet members. So in middle school, starting in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, we have student leadership, where students are able to get together with Mrs. Min as their advisor, and they're able to find ways that they can participate and contribute to their school. And in that, we have a president, a vice president, and secretary that kind of head that student group. And I am able to introduce to you today our cabinet members. And I'm gonna let them have, a, um, have their chance to come up. We'll start with Calvin. Calvin, can you come up and introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is Calvin Nguyen and I'm the student body secretary. Hello, my name is Justin Barr and I'm the student body vice president. And my name is Kosi Sasha Amigo and I'm the president of Christian. Thank you. So for our student body leadership team, um, Mrs. Min is the advisor and they are working on different ways to get involved in the school. Something that they are working on right now is walk the school day, and they will be helping with that, which will take place on October 6th. More inf information will come out in the Bobcat folders. Um, so in the month of September, from September 15th through October 15th, we we're able to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month at our school. Um, at Beachwood, we really value being able to celebrate um, different cultures and diversities on campus. And one way that we do that is to be able to highlight different Hispanic Americans that have contributed to um, America. And Ms. Bustamante is a seventh and eighth grade teacher at our school. She teaches cultural connections. So she teaches Spanish and art. And she has a very um, full background with her family experience and coming here to America. And she wanted to actually share what has impacted her life, um, especially being able to highlight um, her father and some things that have impacted her in her life. So Ms. Bustamante. Buenos dias, I'm Mrs. Bustamante. And one of the things that has impacted me is music. Um, Latin America has different types of music. And when I was growing up, my father was actually part of a mariachi, which is a very popular music in Mexico. Um, even though we're from El Salvador, music just travels throughout the Americas. And here is my father when I was very young um, and he was in a mariachi. And I treasure this picture because we were very poor and it's the only picture I have as a child. And it has, happens to be with my dad while he was part of a mariachi. Um, even at my wedding, my dad got up and sang me one of my favorite songs. We had a mariachi at my wedding and um, he sang to me. So it's something that I wanna pass on to my children. Um, it's not just the music, but also dance. Let me share with you um, a video that has to do with um, mariachi and ballet folklorico, which are two dances from Mexico. Corico or Mexican folk dance uh, was originally started uh, many years ago, but most importantly, organized for Corico is very recent. In the 1950s was started by Amalia Hernandez, who was the director of the official ballet folklorico de Mexico. But it dates back 
and history and research to many years in the pueblos, the 18th century, when the Spaniards came and landed at the port of Veracruz, the Aztecs intertwined with our Spaniards and created the mestizo. Not only are you dancing these traditional regional Mexican folk dances, but you're also creating history. You're also telling a story. Along with Focorico, each different state of Mexico has their own regional dances. And here are some examples of some of these regional dances. This is an example of Veracruz. It is a vestido or dress made out of lace. It has a rebozo and many necklaces, a fan. We wear a tocado that has flowers and the flowers go to the right. The earrings, they're usually gold. The dress is all white because it is based on the tropical weather over there in Veracruz. With some color, pink. This is called a paliacate. In English, it would be a bandana. The typical Veracruz hat. Their part of the vestuario is the guayabera, which is the shirt that I'm wearing. The costume I'm wearing is called a vestido de gala. It is from Jalisco and it's a very colorful dress as you can tell. It has many ribbons, it contains a rebozo, some necklaces and it's matching hairpiece. It contains the adelitas, it's black boots, has a high heel and it contains these gold earrings. They're circled, they have shine so they can also stand out while dancing. It's called a charro outfit. The pants I'm wearing are called charro pants. The belt I'm wearing is called the charro belt and the hat I'm wearing is called the charro hat and I wear black boots with this outfit. Everything I wear has to do something to do with the, with the way I dance. The dress that I'm wearing is from Costa de Nayari. The skirt is floral print. I have long sleeves. They add elegance. I'm wearing a necklace and earrings and a tocado, which is a hairpiece. The vestuario I'm wearing is for Costa Nayari. It includes a black camisola, white jeans, black folklorico boots, a brown belt, a mascada, and a norteño hat. <laughs> Mariachi music started when Spain conquered Mexico. Uh, the natives at the time had very limited instrumentation, which included maybe drums, flutes. Well, the Spanish came and brought over the violin, a vihuela, which is a smaller version of a guitar, and the harp. Well, traditionally, it was kind of handed down through the generations until maybe uh, the early 1900s, mariachis moved to the bigger cities. That's really where they became mainstream and became the identity of Mexico itself. And it grew in popularity up through the 50s and 60s with uh, obviously the cinema and the radio. There are many different types of instruments in mariachi and here are some of them. This is my guitar. I've been playing guitar since third grade and I started off in mariachi in second grade. It has six strings and it's a beautiful harmony in mariachi. It's what keeps the harmony within the beat. It's like cousins with the guitarón and the vihuela. This is the guitarón. It's useful in mariachi because it really brings out the sound in the mariachi. It helps give it the beat that everyone likes to dance to. And it just helps out with the, bringing out the rest of the sound from the bands, all the instruments like the violin and stuff like that. That's why I like to play it. This is the vihuela. It is the rhythm and heart of mariachi. And it's like a guitar, but it only has five strings. 
and it's tuned differently. I've been playing for about two years. I first started playing off the guitar and the teacher, he said I had really good hand movements so he put me to the vihuela and I just liked it. trumpet is on three vowels you have a solid mouthpiece which is made of metal this is mainly the, like the most important instrument in mariachi I play the violin it is made out of four strings and what it is, it's a sweet melody to the mariachi. to invite you to continue uh, preserving our roots uh, through music and dance. That is the background, uh, where Mexico is all about, uh, but also where your family, where your parents, your nanas, your tatas are coming from. And for you to get educated and to know the why, why we have a tradition that is so rich. Thank you so much for letting me um, share this music with you. I know many of you play instruments and I'm sure recognize many of those instruments that were in the video. So thank you so much. And whenever you come into my class, I'm constantly listening to music and mariachi is one of my favorite ones. So hopefully once you're in my class, you'll get to hear that too. Thank you. Now we'll turn it over to Kosi. During this month, we have been studying inspirational Hispa Hispanic Americans, one of them being Ellen Ochoa. She was an American astronaut and the first Hispanic woman to travel into space. And soon after this great accomplishment, she became the first Hispanic director and second female director of the Johnson Space Center. And as a student body, we plan to break barriers just like Ellen and leave our mark on the school. Thank you, Mrs. Bustamante, and thank you, Cozy. Ms. Bustamante, I want to say thank you for sharing a piece of your life with us. Uh, I had no idea that your father even played in a mariachi band, and to hear that he was able to play at your wedding is an interesting and fun fact. Uh, and um, thank you for sharing the traditions, the rich tradition of the mariachi band. Um, and as Mrs. Bustamante said, you know, music and dance really does translate in all languages. And I hope that as we um, listened and watched those videos, I hope that you were able to understand a little bit more as we celebrate um, Hispanic Heritage Month. So thank you so much. Um, we will now uh, recognize our students who will be receiving an award for the character trait of caring. Starting with kindergarten, we have Liam Jackson. Elizabeth Romeri, Lucas Arenas, Adam El Gamal, Leah Santana, Duke Gambino, Jace Perez, Clark Tran, Aiden Ariola, Fiona Kohler, Maddie McCormick Karat, Annabella Saldivar. Mr. Lee. Hi, you guys. I will now recognize our fourth through eighth grade caring character award recipients and it starts with max wig julian hufin dante florindas jisoo park ian okubo aubrey narango riley ernest olivia van Wy, karina wright drake strubel mia falcioni 
Maria Basili, Azumi Fortes, Elizabeth K, Precious Diaz Rogers. Let's give a big round of applause for our Caring Character Award recipients. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you. Um, we will have our student body cabinet members lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance today. Please stand. Right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and to, as keeping with tradition, we will have Mrs. Lee lead us in the Bobcat song. Good morning, Mrs. Lee. And we have our Bobcat joining us today. Good morning, everyone. We're gonna be singing our song, here we go. We're an all-star school, a dedicated school, striving for excellence and peace. We're the symbol of growth and love, the pride of our community. Every bobcat shines with their creative minds, where there's always a caring smile. As we meet our challenges each new day, we'll keep our focus on Beachwood School. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And with that, Bobcats, we hope you have a wonderful day today. Bye. Bye, you guys.